All right, folks, I'm Great Scots. This is another Grand Tactician Civil War uh, tutorial, or kind of how do I do these different things. And this one's going to be on artillery. We've covered the order of battle, movement, and deployment in one video, infantry basics in another, and cavalry basics in the previous one. And uh, so we're back. This particular army, this Albert Sidney Johnston here, his army, uh, he has an artillery division. That's just how I organize it. These could could organize armies very differently, but that's how I do it. Uh, artillery. Generally, they don't. It doesn't take up many men, but the guns themselves are a good deal more more expensive per piece than small arms for for obvious reasons. I also find that artillery has a lot of ammunition compared to the infantry, right? Your standard infantry regiment has 60, so does the cavalry, the skirmishers that the infantry produce have, have 20. But uh, artillery, as you can see here, I mean, these 12 pounders, they have, what is that? 112 plus 16 canister. Uh, now it'll say at the rate of three per minute. One of the things you gotta realize in this game is they do not fire like that. I have an infantry group in here uh, it's Statham, Statham. Uh, they have Henry rifles, and they're supposed to fire, I think it's 12 a minute. Is that what it said? 16 a minute. So if that were true in game, they could only last in combat, you know, maybe with some pausing, five minutes, which in game time is, I don't know, what is that, like 15 seconds in real world time? It is not nearly that fast. It's slowed down considerably. And so it is for artillery. Remember, you do get replenished at the end of the day. Now, I've kind of wasted that replenishment because I haven't engaged uh, this army because I'm you know, pretty pretty comfortable with the odds. But uh, don't, be, don't, you know, don't be afraid to have your, your artillery shoot. In general, eh, I, 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 okay, I guess in general the, the, they're kind of, two types of, of cannon or guns. Uh, your smoothbore, which your Napoleons are, <coughs> excuse me, uh, one of the kind of quintessential smoothbore guns. Uh, and when you just hover over it, you get all this information about it. I, I would say all things being equal, the Napoleon is better at, at close range. Uh, it's, it's canister is... is uh, I think more deadly than the rifled guns. So there are different kinds of rifled guns. The three-inch ordnance, I think, was the most common rifled gun in the Civil War. Uh, Ten-pound parrot is probably my favorite. Uh, there are heavier versions. There are twenty, and I think even thirty-pound field versions of the the parrot that you can get. I believe there are also James rifled guns. All right, so. In general, these are uh, more accurate. I mean, we'll, right, they're saying that accuracy is excellent. Fires a touch slower at two and a half rounds a minute. That's not a huge deal. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to say about the, the parrot. They're saying it's very good. All right, well, I guess that's not quite as accurate. But uh, you can see that this is a, a, a considerable range. Now, with each of these guns, when you click on them, there's the big orange cone, which shows you that they'll, in general, fire at anything within that arc. And then there's this dash line. I'm pretty sure the dash line is the canister line, which tells you that if any enemies come to that dash line or within, your guys are going to switch over to canister. Uh, and it's, it's going to be quite deadly for the infantry receiving it. However, if infantry is that close, it's also quite deadly for your boys. And remember, artillery does not have a lot... These, I think, are the largest batteries you can get. Uh, probably 236 is the most men you can have in it. Uh, in campaign, there there are kind of two, two different kinds. There are the artillery batteries with just the dot in the middle are the, the larger ones. They're not the horse artillery. The horse artillery have that, uh, as the cab units have that uh, dashed, not the dash line, but the, the horizontal, not even horizontal, diagonal line. Oh, my goodness. 
uh, indicating that's cavalry. So when you see the, the cavalry diagonal with the dot, that's telling you it's horse-drawn artillery. Now, for some reason, when I initially recruit this, the horse artillery, I think, has a maximum number of men of about 100, a little over 100. You can choose three different sizes, like small, medium, and large, with more guns as you go up. But for some reason, they seem to have gone up to now the standard mobile non-horse artillery, even though it also has horses. Uh, it might just be a glitch. Uh, again, it's the development patch. It's an early access game. And so that may be the case. But <clears throat> anyways, uh, that's that. I, I believe all things being equal, the horse artillery is supposed to move quicker. Uh, I'm not sure that right now it does. And, and I think that they tried to correct that in a recent patch, but... I'm not sure it worked as, as planned. I would say that that's almost about it. What I will say is that if you try to... So if we had an enemy inside this cone, I'm pretty sure most of these guns would not fire at it. Because if friendlies are too much inside of their arc of fire, and inside this cone, even if they could hit enemies, a lot of times the guns will just sit idle. Uh... It seems to be a little bit better now than it, it used to be. Uh, but if, if if you're finding that, it's because you, you got to place the guns more carefully and make sure that there isn't friendly infantry in the way. Now, you can give them some, some different orders. If if you wanted to move them, I mean, you, you could limber them up if you, if you wanted to, or you could just order them moved, as I, I will probably do. We'll order that battery over there and they'll they'll get their order and actually you know what why don't we just move the entire artillery division especially since we kind of know what the the enemy's done and i guess since i'm here we'll have uh i don't want to do that i can do that we'll have uh cooper's division move up as well but we're talking about artillery so they're going to move uh by default, I think it's always fire at will. I've never, <laughs> I've never messed with any of these for artillery. I, I don't know what they would do. My guess is not much. Counter battery fire. It's it's actually just very clearly explained. If they can, if there is enemy artillery within its arc of fire, its cone of fire, uh, they'll seek that out. This one holds great promise, uh, though. I haven't always been able to get it to work. But if you just want to like, point out a point on the battlefield that they're going to shoot at, and it can be covered with enemies, you can order them to bombard it. Uh, they hint at it. You're supposed to use up your ammo faster if you choose to bombard. Uh, but that could be, again, pretty useful, especially if you're going to go for a flank overload and you just want to soften it up before you know everything else hits it. I would say that artillery has a much greater morale effect than it does massive casualties. Although it, they will accrue casualties over the course of combat, but they really do seem to be one of those units when they have very little experience, it is going to feel like you are not getting much out of them. But as they gain experience, and, and for me, it seems pretty slow. I mean, in this army, I think these guys have, have been engaged a number of times. Uh, all units, so infantry there, they have these these little circles attached to their card. Uh, in the outside, there's a kind of redness that fills up like it's uh, counting around a clock. Uh, that's telling you how much experience they have. And once it makes it all the way around the clock once, you'll get a perk. And then once you choose that perk, depending on what you choose, they'll they'll level up from, from there. Uh, but it seems to me that artillery can fire... If you put an artillery and infantry unit in, in ranged combat, it seems to me the infantry units probably level up faster. Uh, I know that I had stated them in a, in a previous battle. It was actually on this map as well. And they did a ton of fighting. And so that's probably why they're almost all the way around to their, their first perk. Uh, 
But bombardment, it's it's a little tricky to actually get done. I wouldn't do it. <coughs> I don't think I have any units in enemy units in range to do it. Uh, but there is a an expected payoff to it. Uh, as far as individual artillery, you know, I I don't really do any of this. If you wanted to try to detach them because you didn't want to want them part of future army formations, you could do that. Uh, again, I've had no luck ever trying to build. I don't think I've even tried to build uh, breastworks with, with artillery, though they can use them when you get them built during the deployment or the uh, overnight phase, which we're about to go into. I'll let the, the clock roll for that. Uh, and then you have halt and double time. Also on the the, the far right, uh, you can click this for army orders. Uh, and then you can have the option to retreat or to surrender. I don't really know why you would do those things. Uh, I, I'm, I almost did them accidentally once uh, when there was absolutely no reason to retreat at all. But that kind of shows you what I think of that. All right. These guys are supposed to be moving. I don't know what's going on here. So when we get to the actual battle, which is going to be in an upcoming video, uh, we'll show you how the, the artillery works in, in practice. But generally, your, your rifle guns are going to do more damage at long range, a little bit less devastating at short range. I like, I like to give the, the horse artillery, the theoretically faster artillery, the shorter range guns. Uh, because they're more deadly at close distance. So they can be moved to a point where maybe we're being pressed or we want to press, and we can get that close range, maybe even canister fire, uh, if not just pretty accurate shell and, and case fire. Whereas with the longer range guns, I can usually just turn them about their center, and because of their longer range and greater accuracy, uh, it's not really worth my time to, to move them, uh, but rather just reorient them uh, and then just have them have them go to work from there. So uh, we're moving on through. I think that is going to be it for this. I think the next one, uh, I'm going to switch my uh, intended uh, route of things. Oh, yeah, I forgot I, I detached these guys. So I believe I can reattach them. So if I want them part of future army formations, I just kind of, Unselect the detach, double negative there, but we do that, and so then they'll join future army formations, but I'd have to redraw them. So for now, we'll have them do that, but we're also going to have them move forward. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get to nighttime in this battle, and then I'll, I'll just end it there. Because all nighttime does when you go nighttime in the morning is it gives you a new deployment phase, which was just like the one we started out with. Uh, new engineering points will come up, and you can build fortifications and, and all that other stuff. But what I'd like to do in the next video is actually start a battle because there's no intel. I was going to go through how you go through the intel sheets and all that other stuff, but uh, if there are no casualties to show and no conflict to happen, you're just going to see a lot of zeros. And so maybe we'll, we'll talk a little bit about approaches to battle and uh yeah we'll we'll go from there so i hope this helped uh artillery is is pretty neat it does have uh applications and uh, i'll try to show you some of those applications in the next video